<clears throat> All right. Yes, okay. Technical challenges sometimes get in the way, but I guess that we're on track. Um, hi, welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong and successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also really good at helping them heal with a heartbreak. Uh, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Okay, that's my intro. So let's jump into what we're doing here. So welcome to our broadcast. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live. This is number 349. Keep coming. I'm going for the full year at least. It seems like there's just more content coming up. And these are called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And so usually these are skewed towards women, although sometimes, like today's topic, generally speaking, is for both genders and both preferences, sexually speaking. It's inclusive, let's put it that way. And I'm saying it now because I haven't actually got into the talk, but we'll see where it goes because this is not scripted, planned, bullet pointed, or in its card or any of that stuff. It's fly by the seat of my pants, trusting spirit to lead, and I started with the topic, which is don't wait for love, there's more to life. And I'll break it down in a second. Um, Yes, I think I'll get everything. I think I just said everything I need to say. So let's jump into the topic. Okay, thanks for being with me. And if you have any questions or comments during the live broadcast, please put them below. And if you're watching the replay, I'll answer them after I sign off. Um, <clears throat> by the way, these do end up on YouTube as well as on Facebook. So there are going to be comments and questions mentioned during the broadcast. I will repeat them to the camera because people on YouTube won't see the questions, comments that get posted. I hope that makes sense. So don't wait for love. There's more to life. Having just got off a call with a client, this came up abruptly because what real, the realization that came up very clearly was, well, let me, let me back up a second. I'm already jumping down the, down the pipe and I'm giving you some framework. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you know I'm passionate about love and relationships. So for me, it's a very important topic. Yet at the same time, it's not the only topic. <laughs> so if you get that point, I'm sure it's very clear. And in the framework of love and relationships, in the context of life itself relationships are important so not going to not going to deny that or or um subdue that however for many people they make relationship i'm going to careful i say this because i don't want to start shooting myself in the foot they make relationship the most important thing in their lives as in they won't feel complete until they meet the right person now before i go down that path I talked about that on Friday or Saturday about being codependent. I may refer reference, I'm actually going to reference a few of my previous broadcasts because they relate to this topic. So bear in mind, if you haven't seen my previous broadcasts, I'll be telling you we can find those at the end of this broadcast. Again, it's number 349. And I'm talking about broadcasts that started around 336, 337, so the last 10, 12 broadcasts I'll be referencing in this context. So you will, be, you will know what I'm talking about. At the same time, there may be some other stuff you want to watch later on. Good? Deal? Okay. So, you may feel like you're living life full out and everything's going great and you're going down the, down the path you're going on and everything's going good. Yet, if you really ask yourself this question, well, I'll ask you the question directly. Do you feel like your life is not really whole or complete without somebody else to share it with in, as you're going through life? For many people, that's an unspoken truth that they're not admitting to. They're actually largely living life like it's all fine, it's all fine. But at home, they just curl up in a ball with a glass of wine and maybe the cat and wish there was somebody to share it with. So for some people, it's a very important part of their lives. And they're not willing to admit that. And I'm, st I'm speaking to this from the point of view of making the rest of your life less valuable because you're not in a relationship, because people do that. And also to think that life won't be worth living until that person shows up. Both of those are inaccurate. Both of those are lies, to be honest. So what my intention in this brief, short, ideally, <laughs> I've tried to keep it fairly succinct, little chat is to inform you that there's a lot to life, to, there's a lot of life to live that is independent of you being in a relationship or being single. I want you to get that point. In my, in my work, obviously, well, if you, if you know my work, my work self and my clients find amazing relationships. But the thing is, what's in my work as well, which is actually before that, is a lot of times my work is helping my clients live life from a whole place. Healing their heartbreak, healing their wounds, helping them really get clear about what happened in the past doesn't decry, doesn't um, 
deny them having freedom in the future and helping them live life from a very whole place. So when they find a relationship, it's additive to who they already are, not filling up a gap they think they're missing. And I talked about that one before too. That was on Friday or Thursday. I talked about that as well. So again, I talked about those before. So I'm not going to go into great detail here, but I'll reference them afterwards and show you how you can get, how you can get to watch those. So in this context, what I really want to make sure you get the point is that love and relationships are a great place of making your life a lot better. In a way, it's like having a great meal and having the spices and flavorings that make them even better. But you can't live on them alone. Relationships can be incredibly fulfilling, can be great fun, and obviously sex is a whole other paradigm, another conversation. But the truth about relationship is it's not the only thing in life that makes one's life worth living. In fact, and this is something I'll speak about for myself, being a man in a masculine embodiment, is a teaching I got from one of my teachers back in 2007, 2008, actually from two of my teachers, that changed my life and put me in this place what I'm doing now, is that relationship actually, and I, I actually then, for myself, had a new realization, which is the one I've got now, which is, for me, as a masculine man, my relationship comes third, yes, third in my life, after two other things. And those two other things, one of them is life purpose, which I talked about before, and for men especially, it's vital for men to have clarity about their mission in life and goals first, before they can have a healthy relationship, because I've proven more times than I can, more times than I choose to acknowledge, well, at least three, where I did put the relationship before my work and derail both. So I know for me as a, as a masculine man, that's clear, that's clear, purpose before relationship. But I've also become clear, my relationship to my inner life, my spirit, God, whatever you want to call that, comes before both of those. So for a man, who's in his masculine, and women who sometimes live in their masculine is a natural course, their relationship must come after those two things. Because the masculine heart is driven by and fueled and inspired by direction and purpose and clarity, which is what that purpose is for. But at the same time, at least in my belief system, your relationship to the greater self, God, spirit, whatever you call that, comes even before that. And I think that's true for women too. Although I feel for the women in the feminine, it's almost like it's in their... DNA, it's, it's, and, and I'm speaking from my own perspective, so I may not agree with yours, but I believe for, for women who are living in their feminine especially, that connection to spirit is almost, um, it's enmeshed, it's connected, so there's almost no need to put that first, it's just the way they are. Um, a lot of women know connected to their feminine, it's an embodiment practice almost, a way of being one with spirit, and then living life on top of that. So, hey Gino, nice to see you here, thank you, nice, nice and hugs to back to you too, thanks for coming and say hi to me. Um, you're in the middle of my 300, 349th Facebook Live, by the way, doing this every day. And this topic is inspiring me because of a conversation with a client I had literally half an hour before I did this, so we're not, not long ago at all. So this is, this is relevant in what I was talking about with her. So for women, since I spoke to men, let's speak to women for a second about this point, the point of the conversation. I know for a lot of women, and this is fundamental, that for a lot of women, family is a priority for them. So at certain age points, not being in a relationship can be painful. I understand that. So I'm not speaking to that as a... I'm not trying to ignore that. But for women who perhaps already have their family, or who are in their late 40s and 50s who have moved beyond that point, this will be very relevant too. If family is part of your calling, your focus and your, your life, I would put that in the place of purpose, perhaps. I'm not saying it has to be, but it can be. And I don't want to get too enmeshed in this conversation because I know I can be really in trouble with women who say, no, but child, child birth and family is a very important thing. And it's like, yes, I understand that. And it's part of what your expression of life, of love, of joy on the planet is. So yes, I agree with that and acknowledge that. And for some women I know, family did not include partnership. They actually chose to have, have a child outside of marriage, outside of a, a relationship because they were, they were clear that their clock was ticking and they chose to do that. And that's an option. I also know, and I was in a relationship with several women over the years who had children already. So relationship and family doesn't always fit together, unfortunately, with the divorce rate being what it is and everything else. That's unfortunately a rising statistic. And it's a challenge that having family is part of having a relationship, but also having family can be separate from relationships. So in this conversation, this context I'm putting out here, that could be another one of those things in life that you must um, express fully in independent relationship if you're not in one. So if you're a single parent, looking for a partner to share the load with, looking for a partner to make your, your life work better, looking for a partner to make your family better, maybe pushing, pushing, like maybe pushing against water. Make your relationship with your family the priority. Make your family dynamic the best it can be. 
and the relationship can be additive to that. But don't sit there waiting for it to show up to make it happen. This whole thing I'm talking about really is don't wait for your lover to show up. That's what I'm really trying to say. As the bottom line in this talk, if anything else, I'm going to go away with the idea that your life is going on anyway, because the clock, you know, time is happening if you believe in the human experience of time. That's a whole other piece of the conversation I'm not talking about. It's a whole physicist um, thing. <laughs> I'm watching these, these, these directions shining off in different directions. However, your relationship can happen at any point. But if you're in a place where you're just sitting there going, when are they showing up? With your, you know, sitting, in the corner, sitting in the couch at home, twiddling your thumbs, hoping it's going to happen. You may be twiddling your thumbs for a long time. In fact, if you want an amazing relationship, one of the tips I've given my clients before is live your life. Go out and enjoy your life. Be fully immersed in it, expressing yourself, having what you want. And especially if you do things that are involving other people, so you're in community, whether it's doing volunteer work or where, you, where your office is, running your business, or where you go and socialize. Those environments is where you might meet your partner. So don't sit at home waiting for them. Get out and live your life fully and express it. But also, let me be clear about this. Don't go into those different places I mentioned looking for him if you're a woman or her if you're a man. I did that for a bit. It wasn't fun. And it came home empty-handed. It was kind of an energetic drain to do that. So don't do that either. But be available. And that's the thing that's probably the biggest piece in this as well. Is one, live your life fully and express yourself and be out in joyful expression of life, of joy, of, in, of doing what you want to do and having what you want fulfilled. Because any relationship that you put the pressure on to make that happen, to make the fulfillment happen, is undue pressure you don't need to give them. A relationship should ideally, I know I said should, a relationship ideally will be, <laughs> avoid that word, a, a joint expression of love, of, of light, of expansion that adds to everything else you're already doing. So if you're in a relationship, then what's already happening in your life gets better. So maybe if you're already taking care of yourself and exercising, being fit, your partner shows up and you do things together that make it even easier to do that. But you don't wait to the shop to get fit. I think you get my point here. So don't delay your life for somebody to show up. Live it, express it, enjoy it, thrive in it, because it makes you also a whole lot more attractive. See, there's a double benefit. Not only enjoying your life and having a good time, but those people who you might be interested in are going, wow, they're attractive, because you're actually being in your joy, in your light, in your celebration of life. I think I made my point. Um, let's see if there's anything else on that topic to reach. I think that might be it. Thank you, Karen. Well, thank you, Karen. I appreciate the feedback. Um, yes, well, this is advice I've learned, and I'm still learning. <laughs> Let me be truthful about that. Every so often I go through my own phase of having to go, oh, get back on, get back up, do my life, live my life, and enjoy. Exactly, live your life. Exactly, Karen. Yeah. It's not about ignoring relationship. It's also not being um, myopic about your view of relationship. It's about having life working and having a relationship that can come along and add to that. Because nobody wants to be the... Well, most people don't want to be in a relationship with somebody they've got to keep fixing or hoping them to feel whole. That's, that's a dangerous place to play. It's a very whole codependent model. I've talked about that before. And it's a trap that doesn't work for anybody. So being whole yourself, because you are really whole anyway attract somebody else who's whole, because the other part too, you want to attract somebody who matches where you are, creates a really powerful and expansive way of living life in a loving relationship. And that is my advice always, is about having a great relationship that's additive to your life, not subtractive. Point made. Um, yes, too, you're too familiar with codependency? Yeah, I, me too. And I, I yeah, we'll talk, when we talk, well, I'll talk about that some too. I've talked about these in broadcasts as well, but it definitely, codependency is a unspoken, um, familiar law for a lot of people. They run their life that way. And I'm of the opinion it should be stamped out once and for all. <laughs> so again, we will talk. Um, so this is number 349 in my broadcast. I mentioned earlier about my other broadcast from last week that I think would be good for content for you to look at. Um, all my broadcasts, including the last... 10, 12 that I'm really excited about sharing that I've talked about a few times, including um, men boys, ghosting, um, settling, and at least five red flag advisories. So that's a good, that's a good, good look at talks out there. Those are my most recent talks before this one. You can find those on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. You can also find them on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Um, the one about ghosting, the video went awry about 11 minutes in because I happen to have done something with the app and messed things up so you can still hear it it works on YouTube so if you, don't, if you can't hear it on, on uh, the Facebook well, go look at it on YouTube um, 
Oil of No Desktop. Apparently the mobile version of that playback doesn't work very well. I don't know why. One is kinks. Um, having said that, if you are someone who's looking for help in the area of love and relationships, and people are taking me up on this, which I'm really grateful for, and chance to serve, I do offer a complimentary clarity conversation, my gift to you. It's a discovery session. It's a 30-minute conversation between me and you, private, that we can talk about what you're looking for, how I can help you, and get you started on where you want to go. And if you want that, go to barryselby.com, my website, and either go barryselby.com forward slash chat, or you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, as you're browsing around open places, and click on the Let's Chat um, choice, and then menu bar on the left-hand side. Um, I think that's everything I need to share. If this makes sense to you and you want to share it with one of your friends, please do so. And if you are um, have any questions about this broadcast, if you have any thoughts, please put in the comments below. I will respond in typing after I sign off. And I think that should be it. Um, oh, <laughs> almost forgot. Homework. <laughs> yes, I give homework. If you haven't watched my broadcast before, I should probably want, warn you now, if you're looking at my other broadcast, you should probably get advice for homework. It's usually fun stuff, so don't worry about it that much. But my homework assignment for you today on this topic is if there's any area in your life that you've been holding off doing because you're waiting for a partner, maybe it's traveling, maybe it's health, maybe it's a social thing, whatever that is, first of all, get clear what it is. And secondly, take at least two, yes, two steps towards making it happen, whatever that is. So for example, if it's you want to go travel and you want to go to your relationship, start going and browsing websites for the actual place you want to go visit or look up airline fares just so you start the wheels in motion. That's your homework. As in, it could be fun. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. Tomorrow will be number 350, so we'll see what that one brings. And uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow.